find the volume of the solid region bounded by the paraboloid, z is equal to x squared plus y squared, and the plane, z equals 4. So I want to start here by sketching this in three dimensions. So we want to sketch the solid d in R3. So we're thinking about this in space. So we have our z axis. We have the x axis. And last but not least, we have our y axis. And so we know that we have a plane here at z is 4 and the paraboloid. And if we think about it, if you're looking, if you're thinking, oh man, I thought we were done with quadratic surfaces. They're here for the rest of our lives. But we know our traces. Right? So if we think about, say, the, the xz trace, and so if we let y be 0, we see we have z is x squared. And similarly, if we think about the yz trace, so in other words, let x equal 0, we have z is y squared. So these are both happy parabolas. So we can use our trace knowledge here to sketch the paraboloid on the base. And then we have our plane here at the top. So it's a two-dimensional sketch in a three-dimensional region. So we just need to expand this out a little. So there is our paraboloid intersecting the plane at z is equal to 4. So here is our plane, the upper bounding curve, and we have the paraboloid, the lower bounding curve. Now just keep in mind here that this is the solid region D in three dimensions. We're trying to find the volume of this, but to find the volume of this, we need to think about this solid's projection, or the shadow that it casts, in R2. We want our region of integration here that lies in the plane, which we see is a circle. So if we now take this, so actually before we consider the region of integration, because we can see that the plane is the upper bounding curve and the paraboloid is the lower bounding curve, we want to define the function f of x, the integrand of our volume. And we recall the volume between two surfaces is defined as the upper bounding curve. So here would be our plane 4 minus our lower bounding curve which is x squared plus y squared. So that's the integrand of our double integral. And now since we see that our region of integration here is a circle, we know that we're going to want to integrate in polar coordinates. So let's convert this function, f, to polar coordinates. And to do that, we recall Pythagorean's theorem, x squared, plus y squared is our radius squared. And so we can plug this into our function. So the integrand of our volume function, f of now r theta, is equal to 4 minus r squared. And so we'll use this again. This is the integrand of the volume integral. And so now, let's go ahead and again think about the two-dimensional region here. So we want to sketch the region of integration, R and R2, the shadow of the, of the solid. We have our y-axis, and we have our x-axis. And again, if you have graphing paper, it can be helpful here. I'll try my best. We have a circle, very nice. And you could even really see this from our three-dimensional sketch, but for good emphasis here, here is our region of integration, R. And we think to ourselves, all right, well, this is a, certainly a circle centered at the origin, but what's our radius length? So we want to be careful here to find this 
equation. We want to equate our surfaces. So equating those two surfaces, we have the paraboloid, x squared, and actually we'll be a little bit more formal here. We should say we're able to equate the surfaces because z is equal to z. And we know that the paraboloid is x squared plus y squared, and the plane is 4. So we can see now that this equation, this region R, is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. And so using this, we can say, well, therefore, the bounds on the radius Remember, the smallest the radius can be is zero, and we can see that would be the center point. So we have our radius is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two, and therefore the bounds on theta, because this is a full circle, theta is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two pi, and we're ready to integrate. We're ready to set up that volume integral. So we want to set up the volume integral so we know volume is defined as the double integral over the region r of f of r theta r dr d theta so i'll keep theta on my outer bound so this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi we have the integral from 0 to 2 we know that the integrand is the function r, or excuse me, 4 minus r squared, right, the difference of our two surfaces, and of course our differential is r dr d theta. And last but not least here, we can distribute this radius r through to both terms. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 of 4r minus r cubed dr theta. And we're ready to start evaluating. So I'm going to leave this as it is. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and we're evaluating just our inner integral here, which is going to be 4 times r squared by 2, so this leaves us with 2r squared minus r to the fourth by 4, which we're evaluating from 0 to 2. Don't forget d theta on the outside. So this is equal to the integral. So the outer integral is still on the outside here. And so we have 2 cubed. So we have 8 minus 16 by 4 is 4. And then we plug in 0. Everything goes to 0. And this leaves us with the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 4 theta, or 4 d theta. And when we integrate, we get 4 theta from 0 to 2 pi, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 8 pi. And this is cubic units. So if, you've ha if you have not had a chance to look at the lecture notes for 14.2, I did the same example in those notes with Cartesian coordinates. So you can see that it's substantially harder to find the volume in Cartesian coordinates than this cute little double integral in polar coordinates.